Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will learn how to convert a static HTML and CSS page into a living, breathing WordPress theme. So up until this point in the course, the WordPress theme and site that we've been working on has zero style or design to it. Now this isn't very realistic, is it? Uh, because in the real world, we're never going to make any money if our websites are this ugly. So we need to add design and art direction to our theme. Now we could start writing CSS together and try to create something that looks nice, uh, but this isn't a course about CSS. In this course, we want to stay focused on WordPress, PHP, and a little bit of JavaScript. So in order to avoid getting bogged down in CSS and design for the next 20 hours, what we're going to do is download a little bit of HTML and CSS that I've already written for us. Uh, but it could just as well be HTML and CSS that you or your coworker wrote. The actual HTML and CSS itself doesn't matter. What matters is that we learn how to integrate it into a living, breathing WordPress theme. Okay, so right now, let's go and download my starter code. I want you to open a new tab in your web browser and visit this URL. So it's github.com slash learnwebcode slash university dash static. Anyways, once you're on this page, we just want to use this green clone or download button that we see here. And once you click on that, then we are interested in this download zip button. And once you go ahead and extract that zip file, you will have a folder named University Static Master. Now this time around, it doesn't matter where you place this folder, because the folder isn't going to have anything to do with our WordPress site. We're basically just going to copy and paste stuff from this new folder into our WordPress theme folder. Okay, but first, let's just go ahead and look within this new folder. And the first thing I want you to do is find the index.html file and preview it in your web browser. So in this empty Google tab, I will just drag index.html on top of it. And this page is just static HTML. This file has zero PHP in it and has absolutely nothing to do with WordPress. So none of the links are real. They don't go anywhere. None of the buttons do anything. It's our job now to copy and paste this HTML into our WordPress theme and then sort of hollow it out and program it to pull in real user-generated WordPress content like posts and pages. So we want to start moving over some of this HTML into the WordPress theme that we've been working on that lives at fictionaluniversity.dev. And the question of the moment is, where do we begin? Well, it's just personal preference, but I always like to begin with the header. So in this case, the part that I'm highlighting right now, we've got the logo in the top left and the navigation links and buttons in the top right. So if we want to move or copy and paste this into our theme, why don't we open up that new folder that we downloaded just a moment ago, and let's open this index.html file in our text editor. All right, so this is the HTML that is creating this page. And if we're interested in this top header part, all we need to do is look right below the opening body tag here, and we see a header element. So let's just place our cursor at the very beginning of that header tag, and then scroll down a bit, and you'll see that that header element closes right here. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and click at the end of it here. Cool, and now with that code highlighted, let's just copy it into our clipboard. And now we want to paste it into one of the files in our WordPress theme folder. So I know this is getting a little bit confusing. That's why I'm using one text editor with a light color scheme and another text editor with a dark color scheme. Right, so this dark screen is the files that we just downloaded a minute ago, and this light screen is the WordPress theme folder that we've been working on for several lessons now. So here's what I want you to do. In your theme folder, jump into our header.php file, and right below the opening body tag, let's delete this h1 element, and then go ahead and paste in your clipboard. Okay, and if we save this and refresh our WordPress site, here's the new header content. Now it's not styled yet, and that's because we haven't moved over any CSS code yet. Don't worry, we'll do that in just a minute or two. Uh, but next, let's move over the footer from the HTML page. Right, so on this page, if we scroll down to the very bottom, we see this footer section that we are probably going to want on every page of the website. So back in the recently downloaded index.html file, if we go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom of it, 
Right above the closing body tag and the script tag, we see a footer element. So why don't we place our cursor at the end of the footer element and then scroll up a bit. Okay, and here we see the opening tag for the footer. So let's just hold down the shift key on our keyboard and click at the very beginning of the footer element, then copy this into our clipboard. And then we want to paste it into our theme folders footer.php file. So back in our WordPress theme folder, jump into your footer.php file. And we want to leave these lines intact, but let's go ahead and delete this dummy paragraph. And then just go ahead and paste in your clipboard. And if we save that and refresh the WordPress site, now we've got the footer in place. However, we still don't have any sort of styling or design. So next, why don't we take the CSS from this page and add it into our WordPress themes style.css file. So in that new folder that we downloaded in this lesson, go ahead and open the style.css file in a text editor. And we want to copy everything in this file into our clipboard. So press Command A if you're on a Mac or Control A if you're on Windows. That will select everything and then copy it into your clipboard. And then back in your WordPress theme folder, jump into style.css. Remember, we created this file and this comment back when we first created the theme. Now, we definitely want to leave this comment in place, but right below it, we can delete this test placeholder CSS we had, and then let's just paste in our clipboard. Then save this file, and then if we refresh on the front end of our website, we see the hint of a design shining through. Okay, now looking at this page, I see all sorts of things we need to fix. So let's just start working through it bit by bit. So you'll notice down here in the footer, underneath this connect with us column, back in the HTML template for this page, there's supposed to be social network icons there. And when I created this page, I used an icon package named Font Awesome. So we just need to make sure that we load the Font Awesome icon pack in our WordPress theme. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we open the index.html file that we downloaded earlier in this lesson, and we scroll up to the very top of it, you'll notice that in the head section on this line, I'm loading the Font Awesome icon library. Now your first instinct might be to copy and paste this line into the header.php file in WordPress, but that's not the ideal way of doing things. Let me show you why. So back in our WordPress theme folder, if we jump into header.php, up at the top, here's our head section. And remember that instead of loading CSS files directly here, we added this WP head function so that WordPress can be in control of loading different files and assets. So if we want to load another CSS file that loads up the font awesome icon pack, we actually want to jump into our themes functions.php file. Now remember that this is the line of code that loaded our main style.css file. So if we want to load another CSS file, what we can do is just right above this line, let's call the WP on Q style function again. All right, now within the parentheses, we want to pass in two arguments. The first is a nickname that we get to make up. Why don't we call this one font awesome? The name doesn't matter, it should just make sense to us. And then comma, and then let's include a second argument. And this just needs to be a location that points towards the file. Now, if we jump back into our index.html template file, you can see here that I was loading Font Awesome from an external URL. So let's just copy and paste part of this URL into WordPress. So do this with me. Place your cursor in between this colon and the first forward slash. And then I want you to select all the way to the end of the file name. So it ends in .css. Okay, so with that selected, let's copy it into our clipboard. And then back in our WordPress functions.php file, just paste that in between the quotes for this second argument. Cool. So now if we save and refresh, those icons are in place. Now let's move on to the next fix. So the next thing that I notice is that the text on this page is using a generic font, but the text on the HTML template is using a custom font. And if we look at this index.html file in our text editor, right above the font awesome line, you can see on this line, I'm loading custom fonts from Google. So if we want to move this over into WordPress, let's just jump back into our themes functions.php file. 
And right above the line that we just created a moment ago, let's add a new line. And let's just call that WP on Q style function again. So in the parentheses, the first argument is a name that we make up. Let's call it custom Google fonts. And then let's add a comma and quotes for the second argument. And we just need a URL that we can paste into there. So back in index.html, on this Google fonts line, place your cursor in between the colon and the first forward slash, and then drag to the right, and stop right before that ending quote. Okay, with that selected, let's copy it. And then back in our WordPress file, paste it into the second argument. Cool, now let's save that and refresh our WordPress site. And it's a subtle change, but you can see that we are now using custom fonts. Next, let's focus on the actual content of the home page, right? So instead of this generic listing that loops through our blog posts, instead of that, why don't we work on importing this custom welcome area and two column layout and slideshow. So to do that, let's jump back into our index.html template and you can scroll up to the very top and then you'll notice that we've already imported this header element. So scroll down a bit until you get to the end of the header element, and then let's place our cursor right before this page banner element, okay? And then let's scroll down all the way to the bottom right before the footer element begins. So we don't want to include this. We've already copied and pasted that. So just hold down shift and click right here at the end of this div. So let's just copy that to our clipboard, and then let's jump over to our WordPress theme folder, and the file that controls the home page is index.php. Now, in this file, we still want to begin by including the header template, and we still want to end by including the footer template, but we want to get rid of everything in between. So let's delete this test placeholder loop code that we wrote earlier. Okay, and now we want to paste in the HTML from our clipboard, but you'll notice that we are currently in PHP mode. So on this line, let's just drop out of PHP, and then right before git footer, we can enter back into PHP. Uh, so that means right here we are in HTML. So we can just go ahead and paste in our clipboard. Let's save that and refresh the WordPress site. Looks good. We just have two quick problems to solve. The first issue is that we are missing the images or photographs that should be displayed here and then down here as well. And the second problem is that this slideshow section isn't behaving like a slideshow. Okay, so let's fix both of those things, but let's begin with the missing photos. So all we need to do is look within the new folder that we downloaded at the beginning of this lesson, and we need to copy or move this images folder into our WordPress theme folder. And while we're at it, I also want you to copy over this CSS folder and this JS or JavaScript folder. So you should be able to just click on one folder and then hold down the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows, and then just click on the other folders that you want. Then right click and choose copy, and then we're just going to paste them into the WordPress theme folder. So remember, your theme folder lives within your local sites or projects folder or wherever you set up WordPress. So open that up and then drill into your theme folder. So if you're using my Vagrant setup, go into Fictional University and then the App folder and then WP Content and then Themes. And here's our Fictional University folder. So go in there and this is where we just want to paste in our clipboard. Cool, so we copied over those three folders, and now if we refresh our website, we still don't have the images, but now we are very close. We just need to update our HTML to look for the images in the right folder. So back in our text editor, in our theme folder, jump into index.php, and up towards the very top of the file, you'll see a div with a class of page banner bg image, and it's using an inline style that's trying to pull in a background image. And this code tells the web browser to look within the current folder for a subfolder named images and look inside it for a JPEG named library hero. So the reason our photo isn't loading is because if we go up to our address bar, we don't have an images folder in the root of our domain or the root of our project directory. Instead, we do have a WordPress folder named wp-content. And then within that folder, we have a themes folder. And then the name of our specific theme is fictional university theme, and that is where the images folder lives. So then we could look within there for library hero.jpg. Okay, cool. So this path works, but look how long this is. 
you probably don't want to have to type this out every time you want to load an image. So let's go back and jump back into our text editor and I'll show you a trick. So go ahead and select this current path. So from images to JPEG, copy that into your clipboard and then go ahead and delete it. Okay, so now we just have empty parentheses. And what we're going to do is drop into PHP because WordPress has a function here that can help us. So within the PHP tags, let's echo out the results of a WordPress function named git underscore theme underscore file underscore URI. And it's a function, so open up parentheses. And it only takes a single argument, so quotes. So now just add a forward slash and then paste in your clipboard. And that's all we need to do. This WordPress function will generate the path to our theme folder all on its own. Cool, so let's save this and refresh. And we're in business. Now let's just do the same thing for the three images down here at the bottom of the page. So back in index.php, if you scroll down to the very bottom, we see images bread, images apples, and images bus. So go ahead and pause the lesson and adjust these three image paths the same way that we just adjusted the image up at the top. The only problem now is that this section isn't cycling through the three slides. It's just showing all three slides stacked on top of each other. All we need to do to fix that is load a JavaScript file that handles the slideshow behavior. So back in our text editor, jump into our themes functions.php file, and loading a JavaScript file is just like loading a CSS file. So right above this line, let's add a new line, and let's call a function named wp on q, and then instead of style, it's script. Within the parentheses, the first argument is our chance to name the file. The name doesn't really matter. Let's just call it main university JavaScript. The second argument is where we point towards the file that we want to load. To point towards the JavaScript file, let's use a function named git theme file URI, and it's a function, so parentheses. And we want to look inside our theme folder and then look inside that JS folder that we copied over a few minutes ago. And the file that we're looking for is named scripts-bundled.js. Now, loading a JavaScript file requires a few more arguments than when we load a CSS file. So after the quote and then this parentheses, let's include a comma so we can add another argument. And WordPress wants to know if this script depends on any other scripts, right? Does it have any dependencies? In this case, it doesn't, so we can just say null. It doesn't have any. Then WordPress wants a version number for our file. It doesn't really matter. Let's just make up a version number of 1.0. And then the final argument is basically WordPress asking us, do you want to load this file right before the closing body tag? Yes or no? So we say yes or true, and that way it loads at the bottom of the page instead of up in the head section, which is much better for overall performance. So if we save this and refresh, now we have typical slideshow behavior. Perfect. That's gonna bring this lesson to a close, in our next lesson, we'll start working on an interior page template.